Hope you ain't too busy. Just trying to get this thing running. Well, unfortunately, I think it's gonna have to wait. Where's Christian? She's underneath. Do I gotta go? Somebody's gotta film this. Small town business owners, Wyatt and Lance Bush, team together to form Craven Customs. A father and son duo scavenging the web along with Northeast Texas woods in search of rusty relics. While buying and building on a budget, they recreate and preserve hidden patina, giving each one a story of its own. With the help from God, these guys are turning rust. So guys, on this episode, we're headed out to check out an old Dodge truck that's apparently been in our neighborhood for over 20 years. Now, how we've missed this truck all this time, I just don't know. That thing is cool. Yeah, it is. It's gotta be like an early 70s. This looks like a clear path on getting out here. Right. It is kind of hidden out here, though. Yeah. It's peacocks. <laughs> Looks solid from here. Sure does. I love the colors on that thing. Yeah. Oh, twin pines there. Oh, uh, yeah. Hopefully they ain't attached to the truck. Boy, they hardly got any rust on it at all. No, just surface rust, huh? Yeah. It's in good shape. Yeah. Even the old cab corners, I mean, they're solid as can be. Oh, yeah. You need some good bones on these old vehicles. I mean, sometimes we've went out to look at stuff and it was looked good from a distance, but you get up closer and it's just completely wasted away. This truck really needs to be in good shape for it to be something that we're willing to go ahead and make the purchase on and bring it back to the shop. I love the colors on this. I guess the old brush, it looks like old paintbrush paint job. Yeah, I was noticing the brush strokes there, so yeah, it's bound to be. Yeah. Truth be known, though, it probably saved its life as far as sheet metal goes. Right. There's no rust in the cab corners. There's no rust in the bottom of the doors. Really good shape for what we normally look for, which kind of threw up flags for me of, you know, if it's this good a shape, what else is wrong with it? <laughs> Old tires are flat on this side. How's yours? Look like they're aired up. Look pretty good. Yeah. Well, it's got a motor in it. Yep. A little flathead six cylinder. That's good. Looks like it's all there. It's even better. As long as it ain't locked up. Just love the front end on these trucks though. I think this is what they'd call like a B3 model. Oh yeah? I mean, you don't really see these old B3s very often. And when you do, I mean, they're normally not in this good a shape. Starting with the smaller pickup, we find the Dodge has a body more than two inches deeper than the Ford pickup body. By the way, the versatile Dodge line includes a low side pickup, optional at no extra cost, and for lasting dependability. I don't know, I think I'm starting to already get a vision for this thing. Oh yeah? It ain't gonna take much, it's got enough personality on its own. Right, yeah. And what it's like on the inside. Wow, actually not too bad. No, it's not. Big old fluffy seat in that thing. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> hey, look at this right here. It says Chevrolet on the heater blower thing. Oh, yeah? Huh. Love that dash. Just super primitive, but very cool. Yeah. I could tell right off the bat that Lance was, I mean, he was interested in it. Now, it, it had the look. I mean, it, it was perfect for what we were looking for. I'm falling in love with it. I mean, this is everything that we kind of look for. It's got the short wheelbase. It's got the cool patina. I love the old visor that kind of matches it with just the air of the truck. I mean, if I was going out to give you a picture perfect idea of a project, this would be it. I think try to see if these tires will air up and I'll back my trailer up to the front. I think load it forward. Uh, yeah, I think Just so. Move that little ATV out yep. of the way. I love the fact that when we come around the corner there, I mean, I could tell you were excited about it, so. 
Yeah, I mean, it's not very often that we come across a truck this cool. And when we find them, they're like so far gone, there ain't a speck of paint left on right, them. So right. to come across a truck that actually has some color left on, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. got me a little excited. It's got more color than it's got for us. A lot of the times when these old vehicles have set up for a long time, the old drum brakes will end up locking up just solid. And so you just really got to literally drag them onto the trailer. As long as the brakes ain't locked up on this one, uh, most of the tires are holding there. We should be able to winch it on the trailer uh, and just be headed back to the shop in no time. If you had a small budget, nothing extraordinary, what would you do to the truck? Um, you're saving a ton of money on not having to mess with the paint. So I would do nothing but door logos, some different wheels and tires, get the thing up and running with a tune-up, hopefully is all it would take, new wood in the floor, and call it a day. <laughs> so, sounds like a, my kind of project. <laughs> So now that we've got this thing back to the shop, we're just gonna dive into it a little bit deeper, see what kind of problems we're gonna have to work out to actually get this truck alive and back on the road again. That work? That work. Typically when we come across one of these vehicles, uh, it's, it's really rough, it's really bad shape. Uh, I wouldn't expect this one to be any different other than the fact that the body is in such good shape on this one that maybe it is something that's been kind of kept up and, and cleaned out. People don't understand how many locked up engines we've been through. We bought this truck not knowing at all the condition of what the motor and transmission was gonna be in. Uh, we fell in love with the exterior of the truck. It was very solid, cool colors, and everything we were looking for in a truck. Now, the engine, we just don't know. What's the oil look like? Dark, ain't it? Yeah, it's dark, real thin. Yeah, it's gassy. Mm-hmm. Huh. Bunch of rat turds around these spark plugs, so probably need to Blow that out and pull those out, huh? Yeah. Get some kind of lubricant down in there and see if it'll turn over. Yep. We don't need this thing locked up. It's kind of amazing to see one that's set as long as this one has, that it's uh, that it's not become storage for for people, for rats, just whatever. I mean, it's normally just packed full of something anyways. This one looks to be pretty clean, so we'll be able to jump right into it, diagnose the problems that arise, and hopefully get this thing back on the road again. Hard to tell what they look like, because I got so much penetrating on, but they look pretty clean. Yeah. They look pretty good, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Don't look bad at all. We're just going to go ahead and pump a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil down in these cylinders. Uh, seeing that this truck is set for over 20 years, it's going to be completely dry in there. So we need something to lubricate it. That way if this engine does turn over for us, it doesn't scar up the cylinder walls with that dry piston ring. She ain't locked up, huh? No. Feels like it's got pretty good compression. Does it? Good. Yeah. Sounds pretty good, huh? Yeah. I don't hear any internal noises or anything. No. 
I figured for sure she'd be locked up. <laughs> Very seldom that we get one to turn over with the starter right, right. off the bat. Right. The compression seemed to feel really good in that. I think we get some, some fire and some gas to it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll move on to the ignition side of it, I guess. Pull that distributor cap off and check the points out. I think so. Hopefully we can clean those up and we'll get some spark to the to the plugs there. Figure out this carburetor. Yeah, it don't look bad. So. No. I bet she'll fire right up. Yep. It's got no points in it. That's good. It's a little corroded. That's good. No cap ain't too bad either. Definitely should spark. Oh yeah, lots of fire. Sparking? Yeah, lots of it. Pretty good? Yep. Cool. Try it again. Yeah. It's building up oil pressure on the gauge in here. Oh yeah? Yeah. It's crazy. Cool. Now that we know that we're getting fire on this engine, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and clean up these old plugs, pop them back in there, shoot a little fuel down the carburetor, and just see if she tries to pop off for us. Ready? Yep. <laughs> wow. Here we go. Alrighty. She's trying. in the bowl there, huh? Yeah, uh-huh. Wow. That thing sounds solid as can be. <laughs> a little rich. Uh, yeah. Tell the fume coming up in here. Ain't that something? I'm going to see if it'll rev. Okay. I'm going to put some more in the bowl. back there. Will it idle back down? I'll go ahead and kill it. <laughs> Got some kinks to work out yeah. of her, but she sounds pretty stinking good. Blowing up a little dust. <laughs> Get you. Yeah. Wow. Better open this door up before someone has to try to revive us. <laughs> Now that we got this thing running, we wanna go ahead and check out the transmission and just see if she'll go in gear for us. This clutch is all the way down to the floor though. Oh yeah. It won't pull itself back up. So I think we're gonna have some clutch issues. Maybe a spring or something? Maybe. It doesn't feel like it's actually pressing in on the pressure plate. We might have to put this thing up on the lift. Very seldom do we run into an issue to where we have a transmission that's just unrepairable. So in this case, we're hoping that we can get this clutch back up and working again. Having a truck that's going to run for us, but a transmission that won't work or go in gear, it really does us no good. Really not as bad as I expected it up underneath here. No. It's super dirty, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think it might actually have a little inspection plate there that we could take off and just look at the clutch, you know, through that. That'd be nice. Yeah, rather than just before we pull the transmission out, because I bet you it's gonna be something with that pressure plate. I think the truck had just set up for so long, and at some point someone went to push the clutch in on it, well, all that stuff had got rusty, just like everything else on this truck had. That's hard to see, eh? Uh-huh. And so, then pressing that in, didn't have the lubrication, it hadn't been worked in years. It just kind of stayed that way. It's not coming back. Yeah. yeah. So we might be able to spray oh, and work it with the... Yeah, work it with something. I'm trying WD-40, penetrating oil, whatever it needs to have there to help, help loosen up some of that rust that's on there and that. We tried heat, we tried prime. We tried everything but giving up on it. Hitting it? It's pushing against it there. And then all of a sudden, it broke loose. 
Oh yeah, it feels a lot better now. I actually got a pedal. Good, good. You wanna crank it, see what it does? Yeah, just crank it up on the lift here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that should work. If this transmission has any more problems than what we're battling with with just the clutch here, we're probably gonna have to walk away from it. If we don't have the transmission actually working the way it needs to in that, our next step will be to remove that transmission, which is an option that we don't have time for right now. Let off the clutch. Yeah, it's spinning. Spinning? Yeah. Cool. Try another gear? Try a different gear. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think we got a working clutch. No brakes at all. They probably need everything. I'm thinking everything's going to need to be replaced. I'm looking at brake hoses, wheel cylinders, brake master cylinder, possibly brake lines. Lance hates to work on brakes. He'd rather drive one without brakes than have to mess with them. Oh wow, this thing actually has two wheel cylinders back here. So not only are we going to have to replace everything, but two of them. <laughs> These brakes are going to take some time, and that's something we don't have a whole lot of around here. Oh my gosh! Is that two wheel cylinders? It's all work, no play. Oh no, I'm laying down right now. Oh, oh. <laughs> all right. That jumped out a lot faster than I thought it would. That good? That's good. So we've been able to get the engine running with everything it pretty much was parked with. We were able to get the clutch to break free and begin to work. Transmission went into gear, and now it seems like we have some working brakes. We wanna go ahead and just do a once over underneath the truck, make sure everything appears to be safe, uh, run us some new fuel lines just so we have some fresh fuel pumping up to it, and try her out for the first time. Wow. Runs so good. Let's better try out these brakes. Oh. At this point, we'd love to drive the truck more, uh, but we're on a short time frame. So we're gonna go ahead and load it up, bring it over to our good buddy, Dan Shanks, where he can begin to work his magic on it. As you guys know, we love to try to incorporate some kind of story behind the vehicle as we're building it. We do have a town Christmas parade coming up, and we definitely feel like this would be a cool candidate and really grab some attention from the town of what we're doing around here. Hey, I'm Dan Shanks from uh, Texarkana. I have uh, Shanks Sign Company. We've been uh, doing hand lettering out here since 1979. Pretty good idea what these guys want when they when they bring their stuff in here. Yeah, we, we're trying to do a little uh, make it by the Christmas parade, which is like the 6th, and we just got it running and stopping. We've uh, created a, a computer-generated pattern for this. It just makes our job a little faster. And put Actually, this has got holes perforated in it and we're going to use uh, some charcoal powder or uh, baby powder and we'll dust it on there. It'll give us our image, then we can go to letter. What do you think here? Yeah, thanks so much. Is that gonna work? I knew as soon as I saw this thing, this thing was the Grinch. It was green, it was the time of the year, we were doing it all. If we wanted a Christmas theme, this was it. But what was it that made the Grinch the way he was? He was a plumber and this was his plumbing truck. 
I mean, he was the hoo-poo plumber having a daily deal with a hoo-poo. I can relate to how the Grinch feels. You know, I, I've been in the, the wastewater business for over 36 years. When you get called out on Christmas Day, you have to leave your family to go out and un unstop some sewer, you know. You don't want to have to mess with poo on Christmas Day. Does he have a reason to be Grinchy? Definitely. So while Dan's going ahead and working his magic on the truck, uh, we're going to take off to check out a really rare find that we're hoping we can take back to the shop with us. So this is a very strange deal. We're uh, in Mount Pleasant, Texas, or a little outside of Mount Pleasant, Texas. I found a 67 Corvette on Marketplace. And in, that, in the description, it said, basically, meet at this address at three o'clock. To look at the car, we're gonna start taking bids on it around four, but they do have a price listed. So we got the trailer, we got some cash and come out here. I see it, it's sitting out in that field out there. So it looks pretty good from here. Uh, this has got to be one of the craziest things, purchases we've ever done, uh, if it works out for us. So we're just sitting out in the truck as it looks like there's two other people in front of us all as well. Maybe somebody will come out here and tell us to go. And we'll go check it out and maybe buy this car. Howdy. You the owner? Well. My wife is. Okay, yes, sir. She's at the courthouse right now. Yes, sir. Okay. The car belonged originally to my uncle. He drove it um, and enjoyed it for several years, took it to some shows. This was uh, around the Dallas Fort Worth area is where he lives. Um, my dad um, loved the car and after many years of working him, talked him into selling it to him. That's had fun on the wires, didn't it? Yeah. It's packed in there. You can tell it's been sitting yeah. outside. So we've never really been in a deal quite like this before. Uh, and I really wasn't expecting anybody to show up but us. Uh, kind of out of our comfort zone of what we should be spending on this car. But I definitely think it's something we'd like to bring back home with us. My dad passed away in 2008, but before that, he actually lost his vision. So he barely had the car about a year before then it, all he could do is go out and start it. So that's what he would do. He would go out and start it and listen to that Corvette sound. <laughs> what do you think? It's pretty rough, huh? Pretty rough. <laughs> but it, it is what, <laughs> here we are calling something rough. Yeah. It's what we mess with. A lot of them are really talking it down in that. And you know, of course that's that's their plan. They want to talk it down so that maybe they'll they'll talk the, uh, the next bidder out of, of bidding on it and that. But uh, we're used to a lot worse than what this is. We have had, a $10,000 cash offer today that we said we would hold that and put aside. We've done a little bit of homework to try to determine where and what we were asking for and what we thought we could do. But my mother did sign it over to me. Uh, she said, I want you to take the car, sell it, and give it to your babies. So that's what we plan to do. This is an interesting one, huh? Yeah, it was a high dollar mouse house, wasn't it? Yeah. I feel like this, this vehicle here is going to go a lot higher than, uh, than what I'm expecting it. We brought a lot of cash with us. Uh, we don't know if that's going to be enough, uh, but once the bidding starts, I'm going to kind of hold back for a little while and let the kind of little guys bid their way up and jump in and, and hopefully be able to close the deal out and, and bring the car back. Lot 10 times on it. Lot 10, 11, 12. Lot 12, it'll be 12, it'll be 13, it'll be 13, 13, 15, 10, 10, 15 16, 16, 17, now it'll be 21. Now. And the price is going up and it's going up. At this point, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to bring this car home with us. 25, 6, 25, 6, 25, 6. $26,000, This is going to be a huge priced item uh, that I don't, I don't know that we're going to be able to take this home with us. Twenty-five-five, just huh? I, mean, I don't know if it's worth it or not. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> yeah, if we knew for sure, then. Yeah. I got twenty-five-five. 
going to be 25,000. It'll be 25,000 going in. I'm sure that we can get the, the, I don't know where we can get that other five. I got 25,000, 25,000 going back in. 25,000. I've always heard that saying, a day late and a dollar short. Well, in this case, I mean, we're right on time. We're at the place we need to be, but we just don't have the money we need to buy this car. And I hate knowing we were only $500 apart on it, uh, but sometimes you're just gonna have that. So we're just gonna head back to Shanks, see how the old truck turned out. Save that money for another project. The hand lettering and logos turned out everything we pictured this to be. Now that we've got the truck up and running, we've got a theme to go with, but we can't just stop there. Our next step is gonna go ahead and bring it over to a muffler shop. Just go ahead and have them redo the whole system. Uh, but I think we've got something up our sleeve, something to take this simple flathead six and turn it into a mean one. My name is Tim Thompson. I'm at TNT Automotive in Mount Pleasant, Texas. Been doing exhaust work for 32 years. Started in 11th grade in 1990. So what I'm wanting to do is actually shoot fire out of the hood okay. uh, pipe. So I'm thinking if we could put something back here that has a little bit of restriction to uh -huh. allow that exhaust to go that way easier. Uh -huh. So I don't know if you've got, a, I mean, probably I'm thinking at least a two footer glass pack, maybe. Yeah. We know everything on the exhaust system of this truck is going to need to be replaced. But what we want to add to it is go ahead and install an electric cutout that allow us to send the exhaust back up through the hood where we can vent it out that way when needed. We're probably going to have to set it in here like this. That way we can turn this back up and shoot the fire out the motor. Yeah. That's going to be what I think is going to be our best deal. Okay. You guys know that we love to play with fire around here, and with the theme of the truck, this just seemed necessary to spice things up a bit. We do a lot of exhaust work. We're, we're one of the only people around this area that does exhaust work. We stay busy all day, every day. It's pretty much by appointment now. So I can have people from Oklahoma, or Arkansas, Louisiana, all over brings them to me. Always playing with stuff. I'm gonna come through with a, a five inch pipe, but for right now, this two and a quarter just needs to come up. Come right in the center of that. Right through that right okay. there. Cool, all right. I was gonna try to build it in one piece, but it ain't gonna go in one yeah. piece. It just I can't get I can't get that many bins yes, sir. together. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start and go the other way.
we're really getting down to the wire on this project. So having this shop being able to get it right in and knock it out is definitely gonna help us to make this Christmas parade. So everything's coming together well. I can't wait to crank it up for the first time and actually see how she sounds. So what I'm thinking is that. I like it. But obviously, I'd want it to, you know, recess down right. in the hood some. We'll have to cut this pipe off to even get it centered with our hole here. Right. But he did a pretty good job getting it there. Yeah. I think we can mark this, pull the hood off, give us a good straight cut, and then that'll allow us to get this where we want it. But then we need to start trying to see if we can get this thing to shoot and fire. <laughs> So on this flamethrower exhaust, we're going with the hot lick system, which we've actually used on several of our other projects in the past. What we need to do right now is go ahead and mount our spark plugs in here on our exhaust pipe. We're gonna do that about an inch from the tip so we get a good oxygen level mixed with our fuel, mixed with our spark. Uh, probably gonna go ahead and run both spark plugs on this one just because we got a dual exhaust kit and we're only running single exhaust. Uh, get those things sparking. Then we're going to move on to another step that's going to allow this fire to burn a little bigger, a little brighter, and gain a lot more attention. I think we should just weld those things on the inside rather than the outside. I think so. That would be... Get it closer to the center of the pipe. There's a lot of fire. Now at this point, we obviously already have our spark plugs that are mounted one inch from the end of the exhaust tip. Next, we wanna go ahead and add in our fuel to the factor. Now how we're gonna do that is actually run a high pressure fuel pump off of our factory gas tank that's gonna lead up to a solenoid that opens and closes when our spark module goes off and on as well. Game plan would be, we get everything wired in, I press the switch inside the cab, it takes the fuel from our fuel tank to the high pressure fuel pump, which opens up a solenoid at the same time our spark module sends spark to the spark plugs, and in theory, we should have a flame coming out of it. Looks pretty good if it'll just work. At this point, I believe we're all just a little nervous and frantic of trying to get this old Dodge up and ready for the Christmas parade. Now, we've been able to get a lot of stuff marked off the list on this old truck, but there's still a ton of stuff we've got to get done. So we've decided to go ahead and get some, uh, some wood put in the back back here. We decided to go with some one by eight pine, something that we can stain and, and give it a look that'll match the, the look of the old wood that was in the truck and that. I think once we get all this installed, it's actually gonna give us a good functioning bed and give us the look that we're really looking for. I really don't think you can ever be too prepared when you're working with a time crunch like we are here. Uh, but on this truck, I feel like we've pretty much got everything marked off that we can, and we're super excited to present it to the town and see what kind of attention it gets. Uh, 
So we're off to a great start here. The truck is not wanting to run and we're about 30 minutes from this parade beginning to start. The only time it's running is with choke, fully choke, so it's, it's not getting fuel. I know Dad had just rebuilt this carburetor. Uh, we ordered the kit, tried to get it here in time, made all that happen, but we're not getting fuel in this engine, and if we can't get this thing to run, she's not gonna move for us. I think we've got a bad fuel pump. Here we are, 15 minutes before the parade starts, and this thing wants to give up the ghost. This is a classic bush move. You know, we get all ready for the parade, and then minutes before, it just collapses. That'll go into the fuel pump, and then I need a piece of hose with some other two clamps. I just turned 36 last August, and if I had to tell you the last time I ran, it would probably been a lie. We thought everything was going fine, everything was running perfect. There was no need in taking anything over there with us. Hopefully we can get this thing going, put it on there, and get back into the parade without causing a lot of problems for everybody behind us. There's a lot inside the truck. Bub seems to think that it's a fuel pump. Dad seems to think that maybe it's a carburetor. I mean, we all kind of have different thoughts of what's going on. In that kind of situation, there's not much you can do, but hope that God fixes it. And if not, know that it was in his plan for it not to work. What time is it? There's people watching from the sidelines. I mean, I, this is a, just a super stressful event for me, but at the same time, I feel like I'm in some kind of a competition where everybody's just waiting and cheering me on to see what's gonna happen. So, I mean, I was really hoping for the best, but actually kind of preparing for the worst. Did that fit it? Yeah. Okay, we'll wait then. We'll just see if this works. We knew we had like five minutes to get ready. And finally, she cranked up. Get as much duct tape as we can and tape everything. <laughs> Now that we know we've got fuel being pumped to the carburetor with an electric pump, I really don't think that anything can go wrong from this point. So as long as we can keep her running though and all the props function for us, we should be able to bring some attention. I knew in the lineup, Bub was about the fourth person from the beginning. I'm keeping that in mind as this parade's going, I'm thinking fourth person, fourth person. We're waiting on Lance. Most of the floats have already gone by. Still no Lance. I immediately think, oh my goodness, I'm gonna puke in the middle of this parade. I'm so nervous. The thing wasn't running. I ain't doing it, it won't run. This is embarrassing. <laughs> I don't know what to do at this point. The truck's not running. We're right in the middle of downtown stage of the parade to do the show. I guess we're just gonna have to push it. Merry Christmas! <laughs> and then the whole town comes in and begins to help us push what we've worked so hard on to make them happy, which brought such a disappointment. Last push with Vernon Rust. They're actually cheering us on. It's all about the love of the town and the love of the people that Christmas is all about. Sorry, y'all. Somehow through all the trouble and mishap and stress we were having with this truck, we ended up taking home first place. And I don't know if the town just thought this was part of the skit, part of the act with the truck, but this is just a prime example of how when we feel like things are going terribly wrong, God can make them good. Did you film that, the yeah. town pushing? <laughs> yeah. Hey! Broke down right in the middle of Main Street. Just great, but now it's starting to rain. Well, I think I got it fixed for you, Mr. Grinch. Are you sure, Cindy Lou? Was almost quite the embarrassment. Well, you tell me, Mr. Grinch. You're a mean one. Doubt it. Mr. Grinch. You are... All right. 
that. All right. Show me what you've got. You're as cuddly as a cactus and as charming as a cactus. Sorry, wrong button. Oh, you've got to be kidding me, Craig. You're a bad banana with greasy black peel. Just face the music, you're a monster, Mr. Grinch. Your heart's an empty hole. Your brain is full of spiders. No, was a nice touch. Cindy Lou, we have a duty to do. And off in the night, the Grinch drove through the rain. His thoughts of this Christmas had suddenly changed. The shame he had felt just moments before had suddenly vanished. His heart was restored. The three best words I would use to describe you are as follows, and I quote. Stag! 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 Yeah! Well, guys, it seemed like it was quite the disappointment when this old truck broke down on us in the Christmas parade. But now that we're here and able to participate in the spirit of giving, seeing these kids' faces light up with all these working props, I have to say it's worth it all. Now, every year our town will come together with the opportunity of giving back to our community. And we couldn't be happier in knowing that the Grinch himself was willing to participate and spread some Christmas cheer. We hope that you guys like this video and appreciate the whole story behind this truck. Be sure that you guys subscribe to this Turn and Rush channel and check out our Restored channel as well for a lot more cool content. As always, we appreciate y'all's support and we'll see you on the next one. You know, see what the oil looks like, uh, see what the oil tastes like. <laughs> I don't know, that's what we do. I just knew this girl was gonna be locked up. <laughs> Dang it. I don't wanna call it a girl, that it's a Grinch. Now that we're back at the shop, we've gotta dive into this laundry list of items to mark off. Laundry list, it's huge, and they're dirty laundry. Compression felt pretty good though? Yeah, it had a lot of compression, blew my fingers away real quick. <laughs> Blew my fingers away. <laughs> Blew my fingers off is what I started to say.
<laughs> hopefully we can get this thing going. Hopefully we don't slow the parade down any. And hopefully... Hopefully... I poop my pants. Phew, stinky, stank, stunk. Stink, stank, stunk. How lovely are you? Oh, my, 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 it's coming down. It's not my fault, Mr. Grinch. What's your ugly look of soup? And now at this point, our story is through. Merry Christmas to all, and especially to you.